that song together, I can't help but think of Tennessee Ernie Ford. That's right. Take it to the Lord in prayer. That's how you say it because you're saying it right. Amen? Amen? I would invite you to turn in your Bibles this evening to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. John chapter 21, and please notice with me verse 15, John 21, beginning with verse 15, and again, we'll break every rule in every seminary, we'll actually read scripture around here, you know, you can walk out of here and say, you know, he sure messed this up and that up, but one thing I can't mess up, well, I can mess it up maybe in the way I present it, but reading the word of God is always the best Thing we can do. Amen? All right. John chapter 21. John chapter 21. Notice verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? You know, every time I, I read that, I think, talk about a, uh, a way to just change the conversation real quick. You know, here you are, you're having dinner. Have you ever, have you ever been sitting there and you're, and you're eating with someone and they'll say something that causes your jaw to drop and you're sure not, you're not just, you're just not sure how to respond. Here you, here you are, you're with Jesus, the Messiah, and he turns and he says, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my lambs. He saith unto him again, second time, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, Jonas, lovest thou me? Now, you know and I know how we all feel when somebody continues to ask us the same question. He saith unto him, yea, Lord, Thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him, the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Thus he spake, signifying that, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following. By the way, who is the disciple whom Jesus loved? John, isn't it interesting that he doesn't refer to himself by his own name here? We're reading from the Gospel of John. Which also uh, leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? 
follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad, uh, abroad among the brethren that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he said, he, he shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things and we know that his testimony is true gonna go ahead and finish the chapter and there are also many other things which jesus did the which if they could be written every one i suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written you know this isn't the message tonight but I just looking at that last verse. Tell me, tell me, preacher, that'll preach right there. That last verse, amen. I, I just love that when I read that. Uh, it says, The which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not tame the books that should be written. My, oh my. I'm going to ask a question tonight. Are you ready for this? Do you love him? Do you love him? You know, I was thinking about how often when we're sharing the gospel, we'll ask this question. Uh, well, we'll often ask, God forbid, if you were to die today, do you know for sure that you're going to heaven? We'll sometimes simply ask, do you know the Lord? You know, that's not, that's not the most confrontational thing that you can say to somebody. Um, do you know Anita Miller? Yeah, I know her. Psh. Let me ask you another question. Do you love Anita Miller? There's one who loves you. <laughs> and his name is Tommy. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Can I tell you? I, I, I just thought about this. We'll say this all the time. And, and when we say, do you know the Lord? We mean, do you know him? Do you know him? in a personal way. But isn't this more impacting? Do you love him? I mean, when you when you think of someone, anyone in this room, and all of you, uh, many of you have known each other for many years, uh, it's one thing to say that you know him, it's another thing to say that you love him. My. How many people do you know who have convinced you that they really have a deep love for Jesus Christ? They have convinced you. How many people do you know? You know, whatever the answer may be, it is not apt to be as many as say they love him. A whole lot of folks can say, I love you, I love you, I love you. But you know what? This may not be Missouri, but show me, show me. True love, true love for him cannot be hidden or counterfeited. How many have ever gotten around two people who are madly in love with one another? Doesn't it drive you crazy? Oh, man. Oh, it's so obvious, you know? Nobody has to convince us that they're madly in love with each other. That there's nothing that they can do that would cause you to believe that it's counterfeit. Uh, it's not hidden. I, actually, some of it ought to be. Amen? But what about our relationship with the Lord? What about our love for the Lord? I'm going to try not to use language we normally use. We, use. we use this language all the time. Do you know him? Do you have a relationship with him? Do you love him? If, uh, if, somebody, were to, if somebody were to ask someone else about you, what would that someone else say about how you've impacted them to believe that you love Jesus. Isn't that, isn't that amazing when you think about how it really does come back to me? It comes back to you. It's not, oh, you know, I've, I've done all of this. I'm involved in these ministries. I, I've studied the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. And I read the Apocrypha just for fun, even though it's not the Bible. No, I can tell you. 
people are going to care way more about what you say if they would say by this person's actions, I, I really, be I, I believe, I believe that they love Jesus. One of the most personal questions ever asked by Jesus Christ was, lovest thou me? I'll tell you, if I were there and I was at that table, I would have thought, oh my. What a, what a piercing, penetrating question that is. When you say, God forbid, if you were to die today, do you know for sure that you would stand before God? Do you, uh, uh, well, anyway, you know the whole question that we normally ask. Do you think that this is even more piercing? I do. Lovest Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Lovest thou me? Even though this question was answered uh, uh, by Simon Peter because it was addressed to him, it was, it was for you and I. I'm reading this scripture today. You're reading this today. It's for us today. It's for us to continually examine our own hearts and ask ourselves this. How in love are you with the Lord tonight? Do you love the, the Lord more today than a year ago? That's a good question to ask. I didn't ask how much Bible you're reading. I didn't ask what your ministries are. I'm not going to ask you what you're doing. Uh, the doing part is secondary. Doing is external. Doing is is, is the outflow of what's going on in here. The question, because, hey, can people be doing things, a lot of things, doing things and not love? Of course. There's a whole lot of people who go through the doing part, but there's no love. There's no love. The question would be, as Jesus put it to Simon, Peter, lovest thou me? Lovest thou me? So the question tonight is, do you love Jesus? You know, the reason why I'm, I'm taking a, t a moment and pausing is because our automatic mechanism is, 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 is how, uh, what, what, what's going on in our head. Well, of course, come on. Matter of fact, you might even feel a little bit uncomfortable. You might feel a little bit like Simon Peter felt when Jesus asked him three times. Three times. You see, I hope you have an outline tonight because it'll be helpful for you. If you do love Jesus, your life will reveal it. If you do love Jesus, your life will reveal it. When Jesus questioned Peter, he knew that if Peter did love him, it would be revealed in Peter's life. This is also true in your life. For if you love Jesus, your life will reveal it. Firstly, your life will reveal the quality of your love. Have you ever heard someone say something like this? I need to spend more time with someone. And that someone says, well, that's good. But what kind of time are you spending with that someone? Is it quality time. I'm going to spend more time with my family. We're not going to come to church on Sunday night. We're going to watch television. Is that quality time? When Jesus questioned Peter, he knew that if Peter did love him, it would be revealed in Peter's life. If you love him, it's evident to others. You see, you can imagine a young man being happy with the, uh, with, with the fact that he's met the woman of his dreams. He is not going to move forward in marriage if, if he is looking at this relationship like, well, it's iffy and I'm not so sure about it. I mean, would you do something like that? Would you make that mistake? Some people have. He is going to be absolutely sure that this is the woman that he's supposed to marry before he engages to marry this person. You know what? The quality of your love matters. 
the quality of your love matters. Your love